In this lesson, we're going to look at how to get the date and time in JavaScript and how the JavaScript date object works. So getting the time and date or working out the differences between times and dates is a common thing that you'll need to do in your JavaScript code, especially when you're displaying information to the user, for example. So if you've done any other programming in other languages, you might have come across simple functions that you can call to get the current date and time. But JavaScript doesn't make it particularly easy to get this information. And you first of all need to create a date object and then call various functions on it to get the information that you need. So let's have a look at how this works. I've created a new variable called date, note the lowercase d, and then I've created a new date object using the new keyword that we came across in the classes exercise previously. So if we were to log date out to the console, you'll see it looks a lot like a string, but if we actually try and perform any string type operations on it, like for example to turn it to lowercase, you'll see we get an error and that's because date isn't actually a string, it's an object, and we can confirm that by using the type of operator. So in the same way that we created our own classes in the previous lesson and then instantiated them to create our own objects, what we've done here is actually create a new date object. So let's look at how we might use the date object that we've created to get the current time. So you can see in the output that we get on the right hand side that we've got 20, 14 and 36 and each of those correspond to the current time which is about quarter past eight in the evening. So you can see we don't actually have just a simple get time function on the date object. We need to actually extract each part of the time itself, that is the seconds, minutes and hours. And then if we were going to display this to the user, we might wrap the result of this in a function and then put it in a template literal or something similar to display it. So how about if we actually wanted to get the calendar date? So getting the calendar date is even more confusing really because we need to call completely different functions uh, for the name that you would think we're getting. So for example, to get the date of the month, we need to call the get date function. So that's the actual day of the month that we're in at the moment. And the second function we call is get month, which actually gets the number of the month of the year. And you can see we've got a three, which would indicate March being the third month, but that's actually zero indexed. So we're actually in April while this has been recorded. So we actually need to add one to that to actually get it in the right place. And then finally, instead of calling just get year, we need to call get full year, which you can see gives us back 2019. And there is actually just a simple get year function, but that actually returns something completely different. So at this point you might be thinking there's lots of different functions to remember and when you're learning JavaScript you're not going to remember all of these off the top of your head all the time. But luckily there's lots of references for finding out these functions and what they do and what they return, which you can find online. But the key thing to remember is that you'll need to call the individual function for each section of time or date that you want to retrieve. So within our date constructor you can actually pass some values into it as well. So here you can see I've passed in the date of August 26, 1982 as a string and you can see when we try and get the parts of our date we get the exact same values back out for each corresponding date item. Of course the hours, minutes and seconds is zero because we didn't specify that in the string when we constructed our date. So passing strings to the date constructor might be commonly done when you've received stored information from a database or an API call and then you want to format that date for the user. It's worth noting as well that for every get function that's available on a date object, there is actually a corresponding set function as well. So for example, if we wanted to change the date after the date object's been created, you can see we can call the set date function, which actually updates the day of the month. And then when we call the get date function just below that, you'll see it's been updated to 30. So now hopefully you've got a good idea of how you can start working with dates and times in JavaScript. So I did mention before that there isn't a simple get time function that's available on a date object. Well, that's not strictly true because there is actually a get time function that exists. However, it doesn't actually do what you think it might do. The natural assumption would be that it would get the current time. But what the get time function actually returns is the long number that you see on the right hand side. And this is what is commonly known as a timestamp. And a timestamp is basically the number of milliseconds that has passed since the Unix epoch which, if you've never heard of that before, is basically the date of the 1st of January 1970. So the Unix epoch is something that's commonly used across a lot of computing systems so that we can get a standardised time when comparing dates and date objects across different systems. 
So timestamps are really helpful for working out how much time has passed between two date objects. For example, if I create a new date object which is set to today, and then subtract the timestamp from the date that we created back in 1982, we can work out how many milliseconds have passed since that date back in time. So whilst this might not seem super important right at this moment, when you start dealing with user content on a web page, for example things like comments that a user has posted, then working out the difference between dates when things have happened becomes more important. So that's it for this lesson on working with the date object. In the next lesson we're going to look at variable scope.